It's my pleasure to introduce this next presentation on the architecture and construction of the new main building of the Akatwiski Station by Eva Kordowitz and Piet Kuczynski from Kolowitz and Associates in Poland. Welcome everybody. My name is Piotr Kuczyński. I am a deputy chairman and senior designer in Kuryłowicz and Associates Architecture Design Studio in Warsaw. On behalf of the general designer, Professor Ewa Kuryłowicz, and the team of designers, Karolina Czumaj, Aleksander Krause and Bartosz Świniarski, I am honored to present the design for the new building of the Polish Antarctic Station named after Henryk Arctowski. The design was conceived in collaboration with a team of civil engineers and HVAC engineers from Bureau Hubble, Poland. The station is to be located on Admiralty Bay on the southern corner of King George Island in the South Shetland Archipelago, about 120 km from the Antarctic coast and 14,000 km from Poland. The station may be reached by air from Europe to Santiago de Chile and then to Puente Arenas and by the sea to the island. There are 10 other Antarctic stations on the island. At the moment, the Polish station consists of several buildings which need to be renovated or replaced. Some of them are treated because of the rising water level in the area. The satellite image shows the present layout of the station with the clear proximity of some buildings to the seashore. The location of the new main building has been chosen to be well above sea level with excellent exposure, making a minimal impact on the environment. The station is elevated approximately three meters over the landscape, resembling an elegant floating vessel when viewed from the sea. This is done using the steel substructure, which allows for the free flow of wind and snow underneath the station. The shape of the station, its location and the special solutions were meant to be the answer to natural threats resulting from the extreme climatic conditions, characterized by powerful winds and snowfalls. Starting the design works, we are trying to resolve that shape of the mass was going to meet the functional expectations of the inhabitants and at the same time was able to face the weather conditions, guaranteeing the greatest safety to the building and its crew. Starting from the careful analysis of the weather conditions, we came up with several models in different shapes, which were then submitted to test in the simulated wind conditions. On the basis of these results, we drew conclusions as to the shaping of the mass, which received its final form as a mass of the best aerodynamic profile, which allowed for the biggest downward pressure. In this way, the best cross-section of the building was reached, which we called wind active. Simulated wind tests showed to form the sensitive places like entrance to the building in order to minimize the danger of the snow drifts. The design of the station is determined by the tailored functional program and by the modular construction strategy, which has been necessitated by site access restrictions. This led us to a form consisting of three arms placed on steel bolsters, lifting the building over the surrounding terrain with the centrally located base containing the main entryway. The spatial program encompasses private living quarters, guest rooms, storage, lecture space, laboratories, flexible spaces for work, research and leisure, exercise rooms and the sauna, as well as the common rooms to gather and share ideas over the cup of tea. The disposition of individual functions 
particularly in the living quarters, was conditioned by the examination of the exposure to sunlight for the individual elevations and arms of the building. The diagrams created upon the annual sunlight analysis allowed for the choice of the best location of different functions, some of which demand natural illumination and others do not. As I mentioned before, the lower level of the building is created the entrance hall with the necessary functions of the first contact with the station. The entrance itself was slightly raised over the ground and hidden in the niche which is well protected from the harsh weather conditions. There is a staircase leading to the main level of the station from the entrance hall. This is when the central multifunction section of the station is located. It serves the integration, meetings and lectures. This zone is on two levels and links specially and visually to station levels. The dining room, kitchen and wardroom are located around this area. One of the building's arms is taken up by labs and library, the second one by axillary and medical rooms, and the third is devoted to the storage of food. Each of the arms has emergency exits. This view shows a common area, which is lit by the roof skylights. The main staircase leads to the second level of the station. A special dining room will double as a common room which can be easily connected to the area of the main lobby. Each space, like the labs, are designed in sections modules which can be functionally adopted for particular needs. The second level, specially and visually connected with the lobby, is taken up by living quarters. From the side of the bay, with the view at the sea, the long-term units are located. This zone is acoustically protected by glass walls from other sections of the building in order to assure silence and privacy. One of the wings contains the rooms for visitors. The rest of the space is taken up by recreation, including the gym, hot houses where vegetables and fruit may be cultivated. In the rear area, there are remaining functional rooms. Here too are emergency exits with safety letters. This slide shows the view of the main lobby seen from the direction of the living quarters. We designed the living quarters, just like the labs, as a modular rooms which can be easily adopted according to the needs. The folding equipment makes it possible to achieve the impression of space in spite of limited room. Rooms for visitors have been designed with the use of the bigger span of the module and may house from two to even four people. Also in this case the arrangement of the room may be changeable and adapted to the needs. This is the design of the room with the view towards the bay. The challenge to the builders of the station is logistics. It has been assumed that the whole structure of the station will be prefabricated in Poland or some the country. Then it will be built on the test site, then will be dismounted and packed to into containers. The transport is to be by the sea to the destination site. The final construction of the building in its major part will be carried out during the four months of Arctic summer between December and March. It has been estimated that the delivery of all the prefabricated elements, consisting of foundations, elements of structure, external walls and slabs, will demand 113 containers of standard size. It was carefully planned for each container to hold particular sections of the structure, so that none of the containers is too heavy. The main structural assumption for the new building of the Polish Antarctic Station is the use of steel, wood and providing the maximum possible modularity. We used the reinforced concrete spread footings on which the steel frame of tubular profiles will be placed. 
This will be the base of the building. On top of this base, there will be a light structure built out of the prefabricated elements of laminated wood, the ecological material which is characterized by its resistance to weather conditions being light and user-friendly. The roof structure and slabs will also be made of wooden beams. The station's shell is made from prefabricated panels of timber, layers of acoustic and thermal insulation, and is protected by a robust skin of copper-aluminium alloy sheets, which are resistant to wind, high-speed projectiles and sea breeze corrosions, achieving a desired gold brass aesthetic. This slide shows the principle of construction of the module, starting from the split footing through the steel frame structure and then the framework of the external walls and roof. The elevation cladding will then be put on top of it. The finishing works in the interiors will then be made possible to be conducted, including the partition walls, equipment and all installations. At the moment, the technical documentation for this building is being prepared by the Polish Design Office Demirk from Poznań under the supervision of the project management company from Warsaw. Thank you for your attention. May I extend to you and the host, the Institute of Biochemistry and Biophysics of the Polish Academy of Sciences, my best wishes with the hope to meet together at the new Polish Antarctic Station.